Hey, what's happening guys? No tutorial today. Today I'm going to experiment. I'm going to step outside the box a little bit and uh, I'm going to just try a couple things. I've gone through a lot of different hobbies over the years, but the only one that's really stuck with me since I was 11 years old is music. I've taken lessons. I've played a number of different instruments, everything from saxophone to piano. Probably spent the longest time playing guitar. But the piano is something I always come back to, and I've always liked 80s music. I mean, come on, that's my generation. I was in high school in the 80s. That was my uh, early 20s. So synthesizers were something that I always found interesting, but, you know, until I became involved in electronics, I never really understood so much about what they were, how they worked, and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that we should build a simple synthesizer no no keyboard or anything it's just a synthesizer that we can change things around and craft some custom sounds so in order to do that we need to know the basic parts and the first thing we have to have is an oscillator now when we go to build it we're going to look at a couple of different options but for now we can just use the arbitrary wave generator as our oscillator so if we come in here and zoom in and look here you can see we have a one kilohertz one volt peak to peak no offset 50 percent duty cycle sine wave so if i turn this channel on you should be able to hear that sine wave okay now let's rotate up here a little bit and we can see the sine wave on the screen and you can see that it is I'm pointing at the, the screen on the phone you can see that it's one kilohertz and I can change the frequency two kilohertz three kilohertz four five whatever my son who's 14 can hear up to 18,000 hertz 18k i can only hear up to about seven and of course we can go much lower as well there's 300 hertz four five so there we are back to one kilohertz now that's a sine wave what if we change the wave there's a square wave do you hear the difference? Triangle wave. Sawtooth wave. Now, we can change the timber, the feel of our sound in some different ways. For instance, by changing the duty cycle, which has no effect on the sawtooth. Okay. Let's go back to, here's our square wave. And we can change the duty cycle of our square wave. There it is at 66%, two thirds on, one third off. There it is, two thirds off, one third on. And there it is at 50% on, half on, half off. Let's, uh, you can see the wave there. We'll go down to one third on, two thirds off, and then up to two thirds on, one third off. And you can hear the change in the sound. All right, let's go back to wave. Here's a triangle wave. Can we change the duty cycle of our triangle wave? Apparently not. I, I don't hear any difference whatsoever. So what else can we do? What can we change? Well, obviously we can change the frequency. And we know we can change the duty cycle of certain waves. All right, let, let's go through the waves that we have available to us here. There is the sine wave which is a very smooth sound. 
square wave, which is a more harsh sound, triangle wave, which is somewhere in between, and the ramp wave, which to my ears has more of a, um, a high-end bite. We can change the direction of the ramp, it really doesn't make any difference. So I'll turn that annoying noise off. So now you know the basics. We need an oscillator. We can change the duty cycle. We can change the frequency. Well, what else we can do is we can add in some filters, low pass, high pass, band pass, even a notch filter. And we can sculpt the sound that way. So how can we do that? Well, the obvious answer is we can go back to this which is our 555 timer circuit that we use to build um, the function generator. So let me hook it up and we'll come back in just a second. Okay, so we've got our 555 set up as an A-stable multivibrator. And I had to run two capacitors in parallel and able to get into audio frequencies. So let's take a look up here at the scope. focus and you can see we're at about 5.2 kilohertz but we're DC coupled and that is uh, of course a big no-no for audio frequencies so what we want to do we're going to pull out our output there and then I'm just going to put in a capacitor across the output and that my friends allows us to be AC coupled the DC component of the signal is removed and now we have simple AC aud or yeah AC should be audio frequency um, let's hook this up to the speaker and see what we get. Give me one second. Okay, so there's our wave. There's everything hooked up to everything. And now I will attach it to the speaker. And this is five kilohertz, so it's gonna be a rather shrill sound. Can you guys hear that? That's our five kilohertz sound. Now I can only go up from here, I'm afraid. But we can adjust our duty cycle. Which is a messed up my frequency as well. There we go. So, I'm going to unhook this because nobody wants to listen to that horrid noise. We now have the basics of a synthesizer. But, I think there's a better way to do this and we're gonna take a look at that in part two but I'm gonna give you a hint brush up on your RC circuits and your hex inverters okay all right hope you guys enjoyed this if you did give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe and if you are an audio genius Please leave me some comments because I'm just experimenting here, okay? Okay. That's it. I'm out. Peace.